Hello there, my name's John Arnold, and I'm back with another video on the brand new product from MacFun Software called Intensify Pro. And today, I'm going to dig into some of the more advanced features of, of Intensify. So if you didn't catch my earlier video on the basics, I urge you to go and watch that first, because a lot of this will make more sense if you understand the basics of how it works. So I'm starting off here in Lightroom, and I'm going to use this image here, which you can see is taken pretty much into the sun uh, with lots of shadowy detail in the foreground. We're going to have to work pretty hard to make anything nice out of this. So I'm just going to right click on it and choose Edit In Intensify Pro. And you can see that uh, this is already a TIFF, so I may as well work on the original. I'm going to click Edit. You, uh, you can see that uh, Intensify works as a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop and I think Aperture and Photoshop Elements as well. So um, it's going to work with pretty much whatever you've got. Um, but let's uh, start off by looking at this image and we'll go to our default presets. Um, I failed to mention in the last video by the way that we've got sections of presets here so those ones that I marked as favorites are available in the favorite section uh, we've got the defaults which are the ones that I was working with but we've also got custom so I've made a few presets of my own and uh, just in the process of testing just to see um, how the preset system worked but uh, I'm going to work with the default presets because they're a pretty good basic starting point one of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on this little thumbnail view in the corner which of course is meant for zoom but I actually find it useful just to um, to have an overview of how the image looks because sometimes when you work on an image you make halos and things that aren't really visible in the large view but then you look at the thumbnail and they really stand out so it's useful to me to have a little thumbnail in the corner so I like to leave that turned on so let's start off by just trying to decide what we're going to do with this image ideally we'd have shot this as an HDR but it happens that Intensify has got a couple of HDR presets, which is nice. So let's jump in and try the HDR soft preset here. And you can see right away that that is bringing out all that foreground detail for us. And it's also doing some work on the sky. Now, that's not bad. Um, I think it's probably a little too strong. So as, as we've seen before, we can dial that back a little. We just... We don't, want, we don't want that to look too much like an HDR. We want it to look natural. And also, I'm not really happy with the way it's done this sky. I think we could do a little better with the sky. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to paint away the HDR effect in the sky here. I'm going to do my own version of the sky in a moment. So I'm going to grab the eraser brush up here. We've got a paintbrush for drawing adjustments in, and we've got an eraser brush for taking adjustments away. And you can see when I choose the eraser, we get a big circular brush with a yellow circle inside it. Now, if you're familiar with shortcuts from Photoshop, you'll be familiar with the square bracket keys for making the brush bigger and smaller. And if you hold shift and the square bracket keys, you can make the inside circle bigger and smaller. That's going to change the size of the feathering along the edge. So it will be solid opacity up to the yellow circle and then it will be gradually fading off up to the outer white circle. Um, we've also got an opacity slider here that lets us say how strongly we want this brush to paint in. And again, just like in Photoshop, just like you might be used to, you can press a number key. So if I press the number 5, you can see my opacity changes to 50. If I press 2, or sorry, 3, in this case I, mis I misclicked, uh, it goes to 30, to 10, uh, 1 for 10, 2 for 20, and so on. So I'm going to start off with a 40% brush, and I'm just going to back off that HDR effect in the sky a little bit there. So you can see that now has made a dark area on the layer mask. The white reveals, black conceals. We are concealing our HDR effect on the sky. And we're going to make a new layer that does that our way. And we'll get into some sliders now. So we're going to click the plus button here on the layer section to make a new layer. And I'm going to go straight into the adjustment tab. We're not going to start with any preset this time. We're going to do our own sliders. So we've got a whole bunch of sliders here that can affect the whole image at this point. We're going to make it just the sky in a moment, but for the time being, just watch what we do to the sky, and I'll make it apply only to the sky in a moment or two. So that highlight slide is working pretty well for us. That does bring some detail back, but even all the way down, it's not really getting us all the way there. So I could also 
darken the whole image down a little bit but now the sky is starting to look a little bit gloomy so I don't think this is working let's just double click on these sliders to send them back to zero and let's try one of the new features in uh, Intensify Pro which is the Pro Contrast section and obviously the sky is bright so it's going to be a highlight section and I can boost contrast in the highlights of this image and we can see that starting to bring some detail out watch what it does to the histogram as well it helps you see understand what's happening it's it's adding contrast in the brighter parts of the histogram so the right hand end of the histogram it's pushing those the the sort of the three quarter tones down and the very brightest tones up and we can change sort of the midpoint of that by using the offset here so if i use the offset just right i can start to make that contrast work on those clouds and if we combine that with a bit of our highlights now we're getting the effect I wanted now we can see the sort of structure in the sky that I was after that's starting to look pretty good so I'm pretty happy with that I don't want to uh, I don't want to push it too far but remember we can back this layer off with the opacity slider later if we choose to so let's just leave that there like that and now we've got a couple of options. We can either paint this adjustment in on the sky where we want it, or we can use a graduated filter. So I'm going to start by painting this in. I'm going to choose the paintbrush. And remember, we've got all the same features we did with the erase brush. So I'm going to start with an opacity of 40, but I'm probably going to make it a good deal stronger than that. And I'm going to just paint this adjustment in. That's pretty good. Let's make our brush a little bigger. And paint that in some more. And I'm just going to paint the whole sky and I'm doing it with the brush so that I don't affect the um, uh, the brush here the uh, the greenery here and I'm just painting layering that in a little bit and that's starting to look pretty good so let's just I like the darkening that we're getting in the sky there and I can see a little bit of uh, effect on that first layer. There's a slight haloing going on here. So I'm going to just, with my eraser brush, I'm going to choose a 10% brush. And I'm just going to try and graduate the transition there a little bit. Yeah, it's looking a little better. We had a little line in the sky from, from some dodgy brushwork from me on, on that first layer. So that's looking a little better. We could spend longer, but I, I don't want to slow down the video. So we've got a sky that we've done ourselves. We've got some foreground light that we've got on. So layer zero was our HDR layer. Layer one is our sky. Layer two, I want to really start playing around a little bit with, um, with how bright things are. Oops accidentally click there let's just undo that how bright things are i kind of want a darkening in the sky and i want the darkening reflected in the in the water here so let's go and go ahead and we're going to do a this is a dodge burn layer this is a classic dodge and burn and uh, so i'm going to just do an exposure down and again it's going to affect the whole image but once i start working with the layer mask it will affect only the areas that i tell it to so whoops i didn't mean to go all the way down there so let's 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 do what i always say and make it too strong to begin with and uh, now we're going to use our graduated filter and when i click the graduated filter button up here we get a graduated filter tool now this is not um uh, a single layer mask thing this is something you can put multiple times on a layer mask and so what we do is we're going to we're going to line it up where i want it i'm going to make it make the graduation fairly large because i want it to start in the corner and get darker as it goes down and then once i've got it looking the way i want and remember we uh, uh, we can apply multiple of these so we're going to need to apply this and then add another one for the the graduation in the water so the way i apply it is i click the apply button up here at the top and if i just check my thumbnail again look we can see the darkening in the thumbnail um so that's that's made a light area at the top of our layer mask here i'm going to do the same thing at the bottom so if i click the graduated filter again and this time i flip this the other way up and make it pretty big again and drag it down to the bottom this is almost like a homemade vignette so now i've got if you look at the the layer mask here i've got a white bit at the top and a white bit at the bottom and that's starting to look pretty much the way i intended so i'm going to press the apply button on that and now we can start messing with that exposure 
just to give us the effect we were after, just to give us the level of darkening we wanted. Let's see how our little thumbnail is looking. Starting to look pretty good. It's starting to have a little bit more punch about it. Remember, at any time, you can click the, the eyeball button just to see how far you've come. And sometimes it's easy to forget what the original image looked like and just how much progress you've made. That was our starting point. This is where we're up to now. I think I'm coming close to having finished this image. I think what I want to do now is just maybe boost a little bit of the detail and then we're probably done. So let's go and make another new layer. I'm going to click the plus button on the layers palette. And I'm going to go back to my presets because we've got a load of presets in here that are for detail enhancement. So we've got, for example, absolute clarity. And if I click on that, you can see it makes this detail here nice and crunchy. Probably too crunchy, but remember, we can back these things off. So I'm going to just, oh, I'm going to click the eyeball button next to the layer. That lets us turn off and on that individual layer so we can see what just that layer is doing to the image. Now, it is too strong. That Let's try a couple more presets here bold details that's that's nice as well it's this oops wrong eyeball this one is got emphasizing larger detail and i think it's actually pretty good but again way too strong and it's giving us a sort of a painterly effect we could almost do an oil painting effect with that let's try detailed image that's better it's still still too strong I think Detail Extractor was one of my favourites. Yeah, now this has given us... If we just compare Detailed Image with Detailed Extractor, I think it, the Detailed Extractor sort of gives us more small detail. So this, this, this bush, for example, which has got a bit more detail in it. And I keep accidentally clicking. Um, I think I prefer the Detail Extractor, but we are going to have to drag the, the intensity of this way down. So I'm going to do that with the layer opacity. I'm going to just bring that in just a little not too much this thing is going to be way strong if we're not careful so i'm going to just zoom in on the area where the detail is really coming out give it a moment to render because we've got four layers worth now it's got lots of work to do in order to show us what this looks like and there we go that's not looking unrealistic to my eye it just looks like a nice sharp picture so i'm going to say that's pretty good i'm going to just go back to my fit view uh, my thumbnail is looking pretty good I think I might just finish up with um, another little extra vignette just to give it a little bit more uh, uh, tightness. So let's do one more layer and we'll go into the adjust and we can do our vignette here. And this time I'm just going to save this vignette because I do it so often I'm going to save it as a custom preset. So I've, I've set the vignette that looks pretty good. Now remember, you can back these layers off. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make that vignette way too strong. I'm going to create the preset and I'm going to call it Strong Vignette. Okay, I'm going to add that. And now if I go back to my presets and my custom presets, I've got a strong vignette layer. This, this layer 4 I've just made, strong vignette, and I can back it off here and this lets me make this preset reusable in all sorts of different images because I'll just dial in the level of fact vignette I want so this is using my new strong vignette preset and I've tweaked it so that it looks just the way I want and because it's a preset doesn't mean that it's fixed I can still go into the adjust section and maybe let's say I want to push the saturation up a little as well so I've got the saturation slider here I can still do that I can do a saturation adjustment on uh, a layer that was made from a preset the preset just sets the sliders to begin with it doesn't lock them down so that's let's i think that's that's looking pretty good that is a massive journey let's go to our side by side view it's a massive journey between where we started and where we finished and on the way we found out how we can do graduated filters we found out how we can do painted in edits using the the uh, the paint in brush and the eraser brush and uh, we also found out how we can make presets and we can adjust those individual sliders to really tune exactly the details we want like we did in the sky there when we're happy with the image and we want to save it back to Lightroom we click the apply button up here at the top it'll do some processing produce us the final image save that back into the TIFF file that we started with I started with a TIFF you can see up here it's a 16-bit TIFF at 4288 by 2848 so quite a big image it's going to take a moment or two but uh, that's going to go back into Lightroom and get stacked with our original image
So there we go. That's some of the more advanced features of Intensify. I will uh, dig maybe some more into how some of the detail stuff works and how some of the structure stuff works in a future video. But uh, for now, I absolutely recommend you go and have a look at Intensify. Um, you can find it at macfun.com. It's a brilliant product, and I hope you enjoy using it. Bye-bye. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.